Hello everyone, I'm Silent Death, and welcome to Rimworld. Of late, I've been wanting to play some Dwarf Fortress. Unfortunately, it is still being patched like every couple of weeks with just all kinds of bug fixes. So, to kind of satisfy that itch, we're going to play Rimworld, which is described as a sci-fi version of Dwarf Fortress, also marketed as Dwarf Fortress meets FTL meets Serenity, or, well, Firefly, either one. And because I'm pretty sure that Toadie is at least half cyborg at the rate that he's been pumping out patches, so a sci-fi thing, themed thing does seem like a good idea. In comparison to Dwarf Fortress, this is focused on a smaller number of colonists. And I find it to be more difficult than Dwarf Fortress. While Dwarf Fortress is by no means easy, <clears throat> it can be described as kind of a... Dwarf Fortress will direct you down a trap-filled corridor to some goodies at the end. With a little bit of foreknowledge and some precautions, you can actually navigate that corridor all the way to the end and have a pretty enjoyable long game experience. I believe my last Dwarf Fortress Let's Play World series went on for 20 something years and only ended then because we were having stability issues. In contrast, Rimworld will also direct you down the trap filled corridor. But, while you try to navigate, it will continually try to trip you. And other little things like that. The longest world I've had in RimWorld is, I think, less than 20 days. It's a different scale, but that's probably... Somewhere between 10 and 20 seasons in Dwarf Fortress, relatively. Approximately, anyway. So let's go ahead and jump into the game. This is, as I said, much more difficult, so this is probably going to be a short season. There are a number of mods out for this, but we're going to just start out kind of the default setting. This game, you have to buy it currently directly from the developer. It's been greenlit on Steam for like a year, but it has not been put out on the early access thing for reasons. The developer is probably waiting until more has happened. It is quite obviously not finished, but it's still what is there is quite good. Uh, for Seed, we'll go with Serenity, because, you know, why not? And just, just to have more places to pick, it doesn't really matter the size of this, just how long it takes to generate the world, which it's pretty fast to see. That's not long at all. Certainly not compared to Dwarf Fortress. We have a couple biomes and already you can see some things aren't implemented yet. I'm told that these two biomes will be implemented in the next patch along with temperature and things of that nature. Where you settle, what biome you settle on, as far as I know, doesn't have a huge effect. I mean, as long as it's one of the ones that are implemented. What you do need to focus on is the terrain type and the rainfall. A lot of rain is not a good thing. Rain tends to short out electronics. Okay, we can go here and then we do a new colony. So yeah. And also you want mountains so that you have access to more resources. Unlike in Dwarf Fortress, I do not believe you can actually dig down. Or anything it's all just on the same level which does make it run a lot faster you don't have the performance issues that you tend to have in Dwarf Fortress also there's not as much going on behind the scenes okay so one of the things the FTL part of the description is that this has kind of a mini quest system and a sort of AI story storyteller as it's called so there's Three types, classic or Cassandra classic, the Phoebe base builder, and the Randy random. This guy is of course random, 
This guy, or this girl, gives a lot of time between disasters to relax and build a colony, but beware, if she's set at a high challenge scale, she'll hit as hard as anyone. So, that, and then classic Cassandra just creates story events on a steadily increasing curve of challenge and tension. She tries to kill you over and over and over and gets better at it as she continues. Since this is the default, we're just going to kind of go with the default for this season. So this is our world that we generated. You can select it. Quite a lot like Embarking in Door Fortress. And we really only have, what, this biome, this biome, this biome, and this biome of Shishram. Can't really embark on water, I don't think. At least I don't imagine you could. And we want to make sure that we get a mountain. So, something like that with a uh, low rainfall. That's actually pretty good. Actually, yeah, just right there. Looks great. So, rainfall is pretty low. And we'll just advance thing here. Oh, yes. Um, we'll go ahead and have a big one. Again, performance is not as much of an issue as in Door Fortress. So we'll go here, and then we get three colonists. We can't really choose their traits, but we can randomize them. And if you want to be named for one of our colonists, you can put a thing in the comments below. And the next time I record, I will give you a name. Though it may be some time between recording sessions. I'm not sure how much I'm going to record each session. So the double flame thing means they learn at, I think, 1.5 times. No flame is like 0.3 times. And this a flame is at one time. That's how fast they learn the skill. And it goes from 0 to 20. And then they have a backstory and some traits. So we got a good miner, a good constructor, and a decent grower. Not so great at shooting, which is not a good thing at the early game. But he does have a flame there. This one's better at shooting, good at growing. Can't do research, that's actually okay. And he's got medicine, which is not bad. He does have the abrasive trait, which is very, very bad. Sensitive social cooking, medicine, crafting. What were you again? So you're just a minor and constructor. You can do growing, but you won't have time to do both of those. You don't have a flame on medicine. You you are a good grower. And a decent shooter, so we'll keep you. We do need a good cooker. Hmm, it's a psychically sensitive thing I don't like. I don't like the abrasive thing either. Okay, we'll just try this out. That's good enough. Okay, three of you awaken in your cryosleep sarcophagi to the sounds of siren and ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later, you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. So just immediately pause the game and take a look around. We... Um, where'd the interface go? Hold on a moment, something weird is going on. Alright, apparently the recording hotkey gets rid of the interface, so I have to change that. Alright, we got some animals down here, a whole bunch of wild boars. We have a whole bunch of resources right where we're going to land. And a few more scattered around, which is unfor unforbidding them before the game actually starts, so that our people have food and stuff. We're going to need all these resources, and it will keep me from having to worry about food for the first little bit. So there's a lot of animals around here for us to kill. Those are already unforbidden. A little bit more down here. So quite a lot of food just laying around. I think that's sort of random. And now then, 
we're going to claim these kind of ruin structures that are laying around here. So go in orders and claim. Plast seal there, that's quite good. It's like we forgot to unforbid that. Claim that. Okay, that's not claimable, that's not claimable. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference if you don't look very close. Claim that. This one up here. We can't make the stone blocks that's made out of without researching it first. So, claiming them first and then deconstructing these is a good way to get us started. So, more claiming. Ooh, there's a, that is going to be an excellent place to settle. Having a steam geyser right there. Okay. I think we've already hit that one. Good. Now then we will deconstruct them. Now that, ooh, there's some more goodies. Back to deconstructing. Nothing there. That one. Just do it the easy way. There's one. Don't recall if there was anything up here. There's that. I don't really think there's anything to do with water currently. So that's not a big deal. Has that one not been claimed? Oh, there's some more food that we missed. And some more silver, which is basically our currency. So there's uh, silver ore here, metal ore here. There's that there. Trying to decide where we want to start our base. Starting it right here is not a terrible idea. We want to dig inside of the mountain for a base. There's just no better option. And having this just right off the bat is going to be a huge bonus. Incredibly good. Because we don't have to rely on solar power that way. And also it's right near our starting point. Hmm. Metal there. I guess we'll just start out and then see where we get. So get some mining orders. Not quite that far, I don't think. Why don't you just kind of in the center in case I want to build a little alcove for turrets and stuff? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five. And yeah, just do a one-wide corridor to start with. Save us a little bit of digging time. And let's see, we'll go that way. That's as close as we can get that way. And then... Kind of have uh, another path that goes that way, and then we can go back down. But we will... Do that so that I just can get dug out right away. Just kind of planning things out a little bit. There is a planner mode I could be using, but eh. Okay, we could have something. Let's just go ahead and build a big room. So, right there. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. So, an eight by eight room is what we want. Dig that, and this is eight by eight. Actually, we can go nine by nine, I think, and not have any trouble as long as there's supports around it. And that way, we can do something in the middle here, and then we can build other things out there, like maybe I don't know, solar panels or stuff. We we'll want to get the power in here somehow. Uh, 
Um, let's actually see how big that is. So we need to chop down that tree and cut off just one. Cut off that. Go ahead and chop some wood around here. We're going to need a fair amount of wood to start out with. And then we'll give our guys... Well, we'll have to wait for them to land. And they also start with stuff. Okay, so our herbalist is going to be... We'll actually go into manual properties. You're not Matt. You're going to be our miner. Really good at that. Hmm... I wonder if deconstructing counts as constructing? Probably. So we'll let you do that first. Yeah, that's fine. And you are going to be our hauler. I like to have someone hauling just right off the bat. And speaking of hauling, actually, where, who was that guy? Can you also build things? All right, are the guys building things? You know what? You can construct too. No, not that. <clears throat> After the other stuff is get done, you can construct. But we're going to want a place to store some stuff, and it needs to be outside for our beacon thing. So we have this. Um, what about that? Two about that. Build that there. Get a zone going. And I think it was something like this. No, a little bit further. Maybe all the way up to there. That should all fit inside the beacon's range, I hope. And let's see storage. We want... Um, rock chunks. Just in case I have to move them. Actually, no. Not rock chunks. We'll want a different stockpile for that. A dumping stockpile. Which is for animals and things. Dead animals. Corpses. All that kind of stuff. Then we'll unforbid our stuff that we dropped with. And let's see you. We'll look at our characters. So you're one shooting. That means you get a pistol. You are three shooting, so that means you get a pistol. And you are the six shooter. You get the rifle. And they're all hauling and digging and stuff. We can speed things up, and it's telling us things to do. While she just grabs all the stuff that's nearby, and then she'll start grabbing all that other stuff that we unforbade. While he tries to get them a room going. Hopefully he doesn't get too unhappy. Oh, there's a structure already here. Well, isn't that nice? We'll go ahead and claim the structure. Orders, there we are, claim. And do that. And, well, that part is kind of in the way, but we'll deconstruct it. Mm. Yes, that'll work. Actually, we need to deconstruct the whole thing. And the other part, too. Might want to do some hunting here in a little bit. That didn't take long. Just going through. Do -do -do -do. So it doesn't take any time at all to deconstruct things in this version. That has been changed in the next version, but we'll take advantage of it while we can. They don't like being in the dark. We'll get his thoughts. Ugly environment, tired, ate in the ground, and darkness. Ate off the ground, I mean. 
And the floor is not that great either. The natural floor is actually better when it's smooth out. <clears throat> smooth out me. Though it is mining rather quickly, so that is good. We'll go ahead and start building them some beds then. Actually, we need the floor first. So smooth the stone floor out. Can we deconstruct this? Hmm. Deconstruct. Cancel. Okay, so that would be paved, no? Stone tile floor, probably? You are BD of three, which I think is also the same as the wood floor. So we'll have to leave it like that. The smooth stone floor is a BD of five. So that is what we want everywhere we can get it, but apparently we cannot get it here. I don't believe there's a way to deconstruct that. Unless we can blow up the floor, it does have health. But now I don't think we can. A uh, new area has been revealed, so that was this area. Occasionally when you dig into a mountain, you'll discover new areas. Just let him, or let them get started there. Then we'll go ahead and start building them some beds out of wood. Wood is the best thing to build beds out of, as far as I know. At least... Did that and then went right to sleep. Why to keep this person from doing that? Prioritize that. There you go. That way everyone gets a place to sleep before she goes, runs, and sleeps herself. Right, away he goes. Just building that. We do want to finish the door or the wall. So we'll do structure, a conduit wall, probably want a conduit running up here, okay, let's see, one, two, three, four, okay, that's right in the center, just block that down, and then with the door, I have stone blocks as well, and the unarmed one, we can set as me medical in case somebody gets hurt, which will definitely happen at some point in the very near future. Now then, I'm going to have to get power here somewhere. Let's work on power or geothermal generator. Plop that down. Probably have the food area right here too. Just a kind of starting basic structure. We do have 18 of these already in this area. You sleep a lot, don't they? They need a growing zone, they need defenses. Defenses are probably going to be just inside here. I guess we can go ahead and widen this. So, a psychic drawn female? Uh. Every colonist of the female gender winces in pain. Some distant engine of hatred is stirring. It is projecting a powerful psychic drone over this entire region on a frequency that only seems to affect the female gender. For a few days, some people's mood will be quite a bit worse. So if we look at our girls... Negative 21, that's a pretty bad thing. But they still have the new colonist optimism thing going on. It does expire in 6.5 days. Um, I kind of consider that as just, you know, being thankful that they survived the ship explosion. Glad to be alive type mood. A little bit more eating. We'll also have to mine out this area. 
uh, Spate Technician from Tech Heads Town is visiting the colonies. So if we go to the overview factions, we have a few factions that don't like us and a few factions that do like us. There's the Outlander Town, two tribes, and two pirate bands. These can be made to like us, I believe. And we don't want to do anything to make these guys angry, or they will also attack us. But everyone who's hostile will attack us. They'll occasionally send attacks at us. That is not something that won't happen. There we go. We have power. So we can just... We'll start by... Lining something. Lining the whole building with conduit blocks. And probably mine out that area there. If we connect right in here, that should prevent anyone from getting in that way. Orders. Another kind of structure like that. And then run down that way. Connect that up too. And let's see how this works. There's the guy. We can look at him. He's not very good. You could switch a guy to you. Draft them and then arrest them if you had somewhere for them to stay. Um, I'm not willing to piss off those people yet. And doing it for just one guy is really not worth it. If you're going to do it, you should try to get a whole group of them. And we don't have anywhere for them to stay, so it doesn't really matter. Even if we wanted to do it, we could not. Oh, there's metal there. That's good. So, our resources are basically metal, plastic, which is only used for really late game stuff, stone, which is converted to stone blocks, and there's leather, cloth, food, various types of food. Uh, we can butcher animals like you can in Dwarf Fortress. You'll get uh, leather and meat out of them if you won't get like bones or anything. And a local scroll has gone completely insane over here and we don't have any defenses yet set up so we're going to have to take care of that the hard way and speaking of defenses probably want to go ahead and maybe set up small area here or here to cover our defenses so like there and then there and this is going to be, actually that should be one more back. There we go. And then we'll have this be the conduit wall. Maybe go all the way out. That's getting mined out. All right, where's the evil squirrel? I've lost the evil squirrel. Squirrels can be dangerous. I've had people die from squirrels. Where'd he go? Oh, there he is. Okay. You get drafted and come over here. You're going to get drafted and come over here. And the only person that can shoot. Did they just die? What happened? Oh, there he is. Crap. Ah, he's already hurt. Run! Flee the squirrel! Fight the squirrel! Fight the squirrel! You just keep running. Hopefully they'll wound him enough. There we go. Ooh, that was a little bit close. Whoops. So, undraft, 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 
and then we will unforbid. And we are out of time for this episode. So like if you like. Subscribe if you're not. Leave a comment if you have anything to say. I do read all the comments. Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.